Immaculate Ilabagiza's life turned upside down when the Rwandan genocide began. They divided the people of the country in two main tribes, Hutu and Tutsis. Tutsis were slaughtered in their tracks wherever they were found. These people had lists. They had lists of people that had to be killed, and then it became crazy. Immaculate's father told her to run to a minister's house three miles away and to beg him to hide her. The minister was a Hutu, a member of the majority tribe that was killing the Tutsis. But he'd been a friend of the families, and he was a minister. Several people had seen the Tutsi women arrive at the pastor's house, but no one had seen them leave. So after a few days, dozens of Hutus stormed the house, hoping to find the women and kill them. You were hunted for 91 days. How did you survive? The Lord truly gave me the grace to forgive because the experience I went through in 1994, I went through the genocide and uh, they I was hiding in a bathroom three by four feet with other seven women when my tribe and my all my family were being killed outside. So I remember when I separated my father, he gave me the rosary. It is really what I held on to. So praying the rosary, that's the only place I can think of where the grace came from. And also praying with my heart. There's a time when I would be praying and then the anger was so much. My body was sweating out of anger. My heart would be racing out of anger. And I didn't know how to go to get rid of that. But when I started to pray the rosary, it is really when I started to see the journey of Mary and Jesus. I realized that our Lord is asking us to forgive, but I didn't know how to forgive. How do you forgive somebody who is trying to kill you? Somebody who is trying to who maybe have killed already your mother, your father, your brothers. How? I remember going on my knees and begging God, help me, help me to forgive. They were looking for us every day, every hour. So to hold on to the cross, it was a time I felt, I felt free, I felt protected. I felt Jesus was speaking to me. They don't know the pain they are causing you. They don't know the pain they caused me too. I am with you, I was with you, and I'm still here. They don't get it. They don't see the consequences that will come to them. So you try to be like them, to revenge and to be angry. You just become one of them. It doesn't change anything. Learn from me. And that was like, you're right. That's exactly it. We had to pray for our enemies because they can change through our prayers. Our lady used to tell us there's nothing more powerful than a prayer. Anytime we pray, it's like God is destroying the plans of the devil in your life and your children and your businesses so that peace can come, peace can be there. Suffering is a part of life, but you will learn to trust Him even through your suffering. You will learn to see Jesus crying with you because of evil being done in your life. And you will see Him restoring you and giving you the love and the peace even when you are suffering. I always tell myself, if I have legs, it's so they can work and go do something good. If I have a voice, it's so that I can use it for the good to love somebody, to counsel somebody, to uplift somebody. If I have hands, that means I have to use them. So it's up to you. You choose love or you choose hate. You choose good or you choose bad. So that's what this story have given me, to choose God every moment. Because we're here to love. Our home is, is with heaven. And that's why I can, I can smile because I know even if I lost 99% of my whole family, I know there is heaven, and heaven is much better, and they are not lost. I think, I think they're having fun. <laughs> but the problem is me. I hope I do good so that I can join them one day. So we have to have hope, but to live it so that others can see that hope in us. <laughs>